Welcome back to the Explanation Pro channel. Today I'll recap a American biographical drama film called Only the Brave. This movie is based on the valid account of the Granite Mountain Hotshots, a team of ace firemen who put everything on the line to save a town from a historic wildfire. Spoilers incoming. This film begins with what seems to be a dreamlike scene in a forest where a wildfire can be seen raging. A burning bear fleeing in front of the camera is shown emerging from the woodland. The residence of Eric Marsh, the head of the regional wildfire crew in Prescott, Arizona, is shown in a flash after the bear passes by. After being asked to help put out a wildfire close to Phoenix, he gets all his gear ready. Before going to the fire, Eric apologizes to his wife Amanda, who is already in the kitchen and reminds him of their argument from the previous evening. Second-level crews, commonly known as deucers, are prohibited from entering a wildfire's front lines, and Eric's team falls into this category. To ensure that there won't be additional dry vegetation to feed the fire if it gets there, the crew is shown excavating a line and burning grass in the vicinity. When he recommends a strategy to a hotshot team, they respond by telling him to do what deucers do best, which is nothing. The hotshot crew ignores Eric's counsel, and the little town they were attempting to protect catches fire, and everyone tries to flee. Eric asks his former fire chief friend Dwayne for assistance in getting them licensed as a hotshot crew. Most hotshot crews in the U.S. operate at the state or federal level, so they are attempting to become the first municipal hotshot crew. At this time, Miles Teller's character Brendan Donut McDonough gets introduced. He received a text while he was high, informing him that a girl he once dated was pregnant. When Brendan visits the restaurant where the girl he dated works, there he gets to know from her that the child is his. She says she doesn't want him to become a part of their life, and he insists he wants to help while he is still high. Brendan tries to steal a car radio from a jeep after talking to her for a while. Across the street, the police arrive and take him into their custody. When they reach home, his mother informs him she doesn't want him at the house, and she goes to the police station to bail him out. With the resume in his hand, Brendan visits the home of the wildfire team to apply for the post. One of the men present tells Brendan to go because he knows him from EMT training and is very well aware of his shortcomings. However, Eric, the superintendent, invites him to apply in person by coming to his office. Brendan informs him that he has a criminal history background and has been out of all the charges, and it has been three months to it. In a few minutes, Eric says, they'll go for a run, so he should see if he can keep up with speed. Brendan lags as the group begins to run up the mountain. Eric delivers a passionate speech at the mountain's summit, explaining what is expected from the prospective applicants. Brendan was too slow and didn't reach the top of the mountain in the interim which was quite disappointing. Many doubts that Brendan is deceased somewhere on the hill arise in Eric's mind, and he asks another firefighter back at the station. However, Brendan eventually emerges from the woods exhausted and presents photographic evidence of his mountaintop achievement. And at last, they give him a job. Eric decides to put out a fire that the auditor doubts to pass the audition Dwayne sets up for him and the team to join the hotshot crew. They argue, but Eric stands his ground, and it turns out well. He is concerned that he may have irritated the auditor and failed their audition. But when Dwayne lets them know the following day that they did succeed, the entire crew rejoices. The Granite Mountain Hotshots were what they named their group. Then, as Brendan is bringing groceries to his baby mama's house for their child, several firefighting scenes are interspersed. Though she took time to adjust and allow him to meet his baby, gradually, she gives in, and she allows him to meet the baby after letting him drop off groceries a few times, and he says sorry for being such a jerk. Eric's wife, Amanda, while driving back home late at night, during her return, gets into a car accident when her truck rolls over because she fell asleep while driving back home. The boys are fighting a fire, and Amanda is driving her truck. When Eric returns home the following morning, Amanda is seen teaching some clients about horse care. At the same time, the car has been completely destroyed. Eric gets irritated by her behavior and shouts at her when the clients leave, and she responds by yelling back at him and telling him that his lack of presence around her is also to be blamed. She claims that she always wanted to create a family, and according to what he asserted before, clearly conveyed that there will be no children in future in their relationship. 
Eric and Amanda reveal throughout their chat that they are in recovery mode from addiction, and we know that this is part of why Eric decided to take a chance on Brendan. One night Brendan comes to a decision and approaches Eric at the bar with the suggestion if he would mind making a referral so that Brendan could work as a structural fireman, which makes it possible for him to be at home more as the hotshots continue to put out fires and strengthens Brendan's relationship with his daughter as he wanted a close bonding between them. Eric, however, gets angry at Brendan and screams at him, telling him that no one else would have ever given him the same opportunity as he has given him. Eric storms off after their argument leaving Bray and Dan in dismay. Eric and Amanda are arguing while driving home, and Amanda accuses him of being rude to Brendan because of his problems. Eric loses his cool, gets out of the car, and walks away from Amanda as she cries out that she will lose him to the fires and wants to create a family with him, but he is too preoccupied with his job. Later on, Eric visits Dwayne as he is disturbed after the argument with his wife and confides in Dwayne that his relationship with Amanda is problematic and on the verge of breaking. Duan makes Eric understand that along with the professional work, and he has to manage his personal life simultaneously. Eric arrives home and declares to Amanda, I'm all yours, as well as his intentions to spend more time with her rather than spending time on other not-so-important things. The next day when Eric reaches his workplace, a call is received about an outbreak of a wildfire at Yarnell. Eric has come to a decision and announces to his assistant on the way there that he is quitting his position as superintendent to spend more time at home and start a family. When the group gets to the Yarnell fire, it is beyond their anticipation, what they discover is a more significant fire than they had anticipated. They move to the far side of the fire and begin to burn, but their plan is ruined when a water plane sprays water on them as they burn. Eric sends Brendan down to be their weather watcher while the fire spreads. The rest of the team begins to dig a new line while Brendan alerts them that the fire is rapidly approaching. Brendan needs to leave his position, and another team helps him by driving him away from the fire's threats. Eric and his squad circle the rear of the mountain. After successfully returning to camp, Brendan hears the Hotshots crew discussing their attempts to return over the radio. They are trapped in the path of the fire because it is approaching them too quickly. To ensure that the fire won't spread when it comes to them, the guys start burning in a circle and try to clear an area around them of any vegetation. The fire is about to engulf them, so they spread their safety coverings and lay down. Eric recalls the bear on fire approaching him while they are snuggled up in bed. The flames cover them. Brendan hears on the radio that all 19 of his crew members have perished from burns. When Amanda learns the news, she starts screaming in a barn, and they pan back to Eric's house where she is. She and all other women and families assemble in a junior high school cafeteria in anticipation of hearing the men's fate in writing. Unknown to them is the identity of the one survivor who has been identified. The wives all break down in tears as soon as Brendan enters the gym because they recognize him as their husband's killer. Brendan leaves, and Amanda follows him, telling him he shouldn't feel bad because she's glad he survived. Since 9-11, there have been 19 firefighter fatalities in the US, which feature all of their photographs. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video please hit the like button and also subscribe my channel for more videos like this. See you in the next video.